Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this one, I want to talk about why I find Bitcoin so fascinating and cover a few different subjects, topics, ideas and concepts that apply to it. But first of all, I have news to share for my German speaking viewers. You were asking for a German version of my videos more than once, so now it's gonna happen. This video and every future Bitcoin video will be available in German on the blockchainwelt.de YouTube channel. You can find the link in the video description. Now let's get into the often mind-blowing Bitcoin world. A little bit of history of how I got involved. I was first exposed to Bitcoin in 2017, a few days before the $20,000 all-time high. I totally FOMO'd and bought in out of greed, not conviction. And of course, I got wrecked. Then I diversified my portfolio into altcoins and got wrecked even harder. But I didn't sell and eventually returned to Bitcoin. I started learning about what I invested in. From the Bitcoin Standard to Vijay Boyapati's The Bullish Case for Bitcoin to now more than a handful of books and more articles than I can count. The thing that kept me going is that no one has found the bottom of the Bitcoin rabbit hole. Thinking and learning about Bitcoin is really interesting to me because it's intellectually challenging and it's also very interdisciplinary. I'm not a specialist in anything but more of a generalist that tries to combine different disciplines. Bitcoin is honestly perfect for that. It's an intersection of computer science, which I have a background in due to my bachelor degree and self-taught software engineering, economic theory, especially Austrian economics, psychology, game theory, technology and innovation. Sometimes I feel like Bitcoin is just a trap that makes you want to learn all sorts of different things. It's a great teacher amplified by skin in the game, meaning you have something to gain or to lose when you own Bitcoin. So let's talk about the different disciplines for a bit, starting with technology. I like technology. Technology makes the human race more advanced and innovation creates prosperity. Bitcoin is not just a minor upgrade to an unimportant existing technology, but instead tackling an ancient technology, one we all use and yet don't seem to understand. Money, our language for value communication. Bitcoin solves the Byzantine's general's problem and makes it possible to have a shared state of knowledge about who owns what and most importantly when, without an institution creating or confirming these records. You can ponder about what this means for society and you quickly realize that the implications are huge. Bitcoin will do to banks what email did to the postal industry. But there's more to it. Bitcoin is not a technology company. It's not a Twitter, Facebook or Google that can censor whatever they like and deplatform people or entire nations. Bitcoin the network is as open and inclusive as the internet. It's a decentralized system and its biggest feature is the unchangeable rules that every participant is applying without any hierarchy or exclusive rights for a few. Bitcoin as a technology is a communication protocol, like TCP IP for the internet. This means you can build layers on top of it. We can't even imagine yet what type of applications will be built on top of Bitcoin. Money suddenly is software. Jack Mullers, for example, is building Strike, which is using the Bitcoin and Lightning network. Yeah, we're interoperable with both the Bitcoin network and the Lightning network. So actually, majority of Strike's volume today in the United States is on chain, believe it or not. Um, I think it's because Lightning has no killer app. I mean, you're either doing gift cards or, you know, it's more of a toy. I think with this, you know, international money transfer product, I think it'll be Lightning's first killer app and delivering its, its value on a global stage. Uh, but I've also been told there's like limitations with liquidity in the Lightning Network. Is that not a problem you're having at all? No, not at all. I mean, we manage, we have so many nodes all over the world. Uh, it's easy again. I mean, this is money that is software. If there's something that's missing, we just build it. I mean, you really want to bet against engineering and betting against engineering is betting against humanity and human life itself. So. No, we just build it. back against Jack Mallers. Yeah, and, and here's the other cool thing is, you know, we have our own Lightning setup, but, you know, there's a company, Bottle Pay, that seems to be operating a similar service. If a user wants to send money from Strike to Bottle Pay, they can. Why? Did we come up with some way to communicate that PayPal and Cash App didn't? No. We're on the same open monetary network, right? You can also think in terms of game theory when you look at Bitcoin. I made a video a while ago that shows how everything trends towards a single communication protocol, the shelling point of money. Another game theoretical concept would be the prisoner's dilemma that nations are in regarding Bitcoin where the only winning move is to play. The game theory on a macro level also has psychological impacts on the individual level. Why do people experience fear of missing out and greed at the worst time they could buy and cower in fear when the best buying opportunities arise? How does trust work? Trusting a government or trusting a currency? When and how is this trust broken and what if we eliminate the need for trust? 
Also, why do we desire to collect scarce objects, so-called Weblen goods? Many interesting questions that can be answered through evolution, incentive design and behavioral psychology. I also just love how Bitcoin emerged from the ground up. It went from zero to a $1 trillion market cap as more and more people choose Bitcoin on the free market, with retail front-running institutions for maybe the first time ever and no elitist advantage. There is a path dependence here. The history and distribution would be very different if we all knew from the get-go how Bitcoin would turn out. Cypherpunks were leading the way and now more than a decade later the variety of people is just incredible. While the community can be quite toxic and I pointed out in a different video why that's the case, the individuals that are part of it are amazing. You got some of the smartest people like Nick Zabo or Balaji Srinivasan and at the same time the plebs that meme Bitcoin into a global reserve currency. You just got people from all sorts of backgrounds. To name just one example, think about Brandon Quittum comparing Bitcoin to Fungi in a one hour long excellent article. The extremely far-reaching implications for society, nation-states, culture and the economy pose interesting questions that I like to think about. Bitcoin is a peaceful revolution that disrupts the wealth inequality created by central bank money monopolies and the Cantillon effect, making war expensive again. But it's also a tool that teaches saving and delayed gratification, the antidote to an abundance of dopamine in the form of social media, Netflix, fast food and porn. And it's also a system that has no ruler, the most democratic voting system ever where voting happens every 10 minutes, not every few years. And for the cherry on top, there is Satoshi Nakamoto. The mystical figure. No one knows who created Bitcoin and the pseudonymous creator is basically a demigod at this point, giving the world something of immense value and then leaving without any monetary compensation whatsoever. We will look at all these fascinating elements over the next few weeks and months and the list just keeps growing. I'm still learning, still figuring out what the implications of Bitcoin exactly are and what a conclusion could look like. So if you are interested in being part of the journey, subscribe to the channel. I really like this tweet I saw yesterday. Proof of work runs so deep that Bitcoin the concept doesn't even make sense until you put in the work for yourself. Maybe it's said that the most interesting and intellectually challenging thing I've found so far is an invisible yet orange coin. But that's how it is. Over the last few years, I found nothing better to think about. That's how fascinating Bitcoin really is.